Let's try the no waste four at a time flying geese method. And turn it into a patchwork star. Welcome back to Patentful TV. If you're new here, I'm Monica and this is my daughter, Alora, and we make videos to share with everyone how we make our quilt as you go quilts. So this is part 11 of Island Home. And if you're just tuning in, we're making a quilt as you go sampler using seven different methods of quilt as you go. That's right. And yep. all the videos are free for everyone to enjoy and learn along with us on YouTube. And if you would like to purchase the course notes, they're all written instructions with step-by-step -step photo images. That's right. They're on our website and they're $10 each. And we also have a Facebook where you can share your progress. That's a Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we also have a Facebook. <laughs> we also have a Facebook group where you can share your progress. That's right. And <laughs> uh, and it's so nice that we've got people connecting all over the world, making really beautiful quilts, and we love seeing all the photos mm -hmm. that everyone's sharing. So at the end of this video, stick around because Alora has a surprise for us. Yes, we're going to be sharing some of the photos that people have submitted That's so right. you can see what everyone's doing. And congratulations if you've made it this far. Even yep. if you haven't started yet, you can start at any time because quilt patterns have no expiry date. That's exactly yes. right. That's so true. Now, in a previous video, we made a quilt to go flying geese block. Mm -hmm. And with this method, we did cut the corners off. So there was a little bit of waste, but we didn't mind that waste, did we? No, because we used it in our strum quilt which is another tutorial that you can check out on our website that also has a pattern that goes with it. That's right. And we'll also put the Quarter to Go Flying Geese um, link so you can check that one out too. Yeah. So for part 11, we thought it'd be really fun to try the four at a time, no waste flying geese and make them, did I say flying geese properly? Flying geese. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and then <laughs> make it into um, a star block. And um, I did what everybody does. There it is there. I did what everybody does. When you want to find out something, you get onto YouTube and you search it mm -hmm. and there's lots of tutorials showing how to do this method and I just want to say thanks to all the other creators out there YouTube creators that um, shared the technique because that's how I learned how to do this how good is that it is it's great and also one other thing I want to say is um, whoever invented this method I'm so um, like just in awe it is so clever I just couldn't believe it when I first saw it mm -hmm. really really clever so we hope you enjoy this tutorial let's get started This is what you need to make the four flying geese for the island home quilt. The cutting instructions for the complete star block are in the course notes. The large background square will be the geese and the four smaller squares will be the star points. We're using two different patterned fabrics, but you can make them all the same if you like. Turn the pattern squares to the wrong side and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner on each of the squares. Take one of each color of the small squares and the large square with the right side facing up. Place one square in the bottom left corner of the large background square, making the edges nice and level. Now this step is optional, but I think that it makes it really easy to hold the fabric in place with a dab of fabric glue in the very corners of the small square. Just tiny dabs to ensure that the glue will end up in the seam allowance. Now take the other small square in the different color and place it in the top right hand corner. Make sure that the marked diagonal line is aligned with the line of the bottom square. Once again, if you like, you can hold it in place with tiny dabs of glue in the corners. Now head to the machine and sew a quarter inch either side of the marked line. Thread your machine up with a neutral colored thread, a size 70 needle and a quarter inch foot. For this step, we're going to use a regular quarter inch seam allowance, not a scant quarter inch seam allowance, and I'll explain why soon. Now sew a quarter inch away from the marked line. I like to start sewing on the second square because it overlaps the first square. If you were making these in bulk, you would have them all prepared and chained from one to the other. But I'm starting with a little scrap of fabric that we call the leader to prevent my corners from being chewed when I sew, or when I start to sew. Next, turn around and sew a quarter inch away from the line on the other side.
Now cut on the marked line. This will make two pieces that look like this. Head to the iron and set the seam, then fold the small triangles over to the right side and gently finger press the seam towards the small triangles before pressing. Being careful to not stretch the fabric because it is now on the bias grain. Take the two pieces and position one small square in the remaining corner of the background fabric, making sure that the marked diagonal line is centred between the small triangles. Pin or hold in place with some tiny dabs of fabric glue just in the corners. Now head to the machine and sew a quarter inch away from the marked line, sewing down one side and chaining on to the second piece, then turning around and sewing down the other side of the line, once again using the leader to prevent the corners of the fabric from being chewed at the start. Head back to the cutting mat and cut on the marked diagonal lines. This will make the four flying geese units. Set the seam, then gently finger press the seam towards the small triangles and press. This two color combination will make one in purple, one in blue, and two that are blue and purple. Now to trim the geese back to three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. To do this, you can use a regular patchwork ruler or a six and a half inch square ruler, which is what I'm going to use. If you are right-handed, start with the point on the right side and the number one of the ruler in the top right-hand corner. If you're left-handed, start with the point on the left side and the number one of your ruler in the top left-hand corner. Okay, so I'm right-handed, so I'll start with the number one of my ruler in the top right-hand corner. First, locate the six and a half by three and a half inch lines on your ruler. Now half of six and a half is three and a quarter, so place the three and a quarter inch line at the point, allowing a quarter inch seam allowance outside the point. This is why I didn't use a scant quarter inch to sew either side of the marked line in the first step. Because if I did this, it would only be a scant quarter inch above the point, and it's better to have a full quarter inch above the point. So when it's sewn into the star block with a scant quarter inch, we won't lose the points. Now I know that this is all really technical, and if you missed our accurate piecing video, I explained all about the scant quarter inch seam allowance there. <laughs> What? <laughs> so we'll put a link in the description so you can check that out later. Now check that the three and a half inch line will connect with the diagonal seams on the opposite side. Just do your best to line it up. Now trim up the side and across the top edge. Rotate the block so that you have the trimmed edge on the side and across the bottom. Position the ruler with the number one in the top right hand corner. Place the three and a half inch line on the trimmed edge making sure that the three and a quarter inch line aligns with the corner and the six and a half inch line aligns with the bottom trimmed edge. Trim up the side and across the top and here is one flying geese unit. Trim the other blocks in the same way. So that's how you make four at a time no waste flying geese and I'll put a little chart in our weekly blog post with all the different size flying geese that you can make and the size of the squares that you need to cut. Now to make the star, this time the pieces are joined together with the scant quarter inch seam allowance. Take the other pieces and lay them out to form the multicolored star. Separate the pieces into rows and join the rows together. Press the seams towards the darkest fabric, making sure that the seams alternate from row to row. Now join the rows together using the pin trick or glue basting as I've shown in previous videos before to make sure that the seams align. Press the seams towards the darkest fabric. So I just noticed that my star turned out differently to how I had it laid out, but turns out I like the half-half star, so it's up to you. You can lay your star out any way that you like. 
The next step is to add a border around the star. So take the 63 inch length of background fabric and fold it twice and cut one inch and a half strip down the raw straight edge, not the selvage edge at this stage. With the strip double, square and trim one end, then transfer the square edge to the opposite side and measure and cut 12 and a half inches and then 14 and a half inches. This will give you two of each size just cut. Now sew the side borders onto the star, press and then sew on the top and bottom borders. Now to quilt the star. Just in the usual way, make the quilt sandwich and hold together with safety pins. Set your machine up for quilting and stitch in the ditch. This can be done in one continuous go by starting here, then sewing the center square first, then around the points and then around the border seam. But don't stitch outside the border seam line as the edges need to be left loose for the one to three quilt as you go joining method. So go ahead and stitch in the ditch. You can now get creative and quilt the block any way that you like. I'm going to sew some square spirals just in the same way that we've done with some of the other blocks just to tie them in with the rest of the quilt. To do this start by marking a square on point in the center square and then just spiraling away just in the same way as we have done before. And here is my finished star block. You can see that I started with the center square and then just filled in all of the other spaces in the same way. Now there's a second block for part 11 and that's this pretty lantern block. It's perfect for scraps, especially if you've got lots of jelly roll scraps. This is a really easy one to make. So all of the step-by-step -step photos and instructions are in the course notes. So that was part 11, a very cruisy episode this time to give everybody a chance to catch up. That's right. And next week we have one more applique block to do and we're going to start joining the whole quilt together. So that's really exciting. Yay. Can't wait for next week. And stick around for our little slideshow at the end where everyone submitted their island home photos for you to check out and get some inspo. That's right. And if you've been watching this series and you think you want to get involved, get involved. You can start at any point in time. The course notes are all available to purchase on our website. Yes. And the videos will be here. So if you want to learn quilt as you go from the expert. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye.